Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be replacing the factory radio on this 2007 Toyota Camry. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to get the factory head unit out. We'll head over to the bench to show you the dash kit and the wiring and all accessories needed to install an aftermarket doubled in touchscreen radio in its place. Let's get started. As we jump into things, a couple of things to note, this does have the factory JBL sound system and that does change the harness that we need to retain that JBL just ever so slightly. Whether you plan on keeping the JBL or not, you need the JBL version of the harness. If you don't have JBL, we'll put the variant down in the description there for you. We also have steering wheel volume controls that do, we do also want to retain. And finally, there is an aux port way at the back of that center pocket there that we plan on retaining. We don't have a factory USB here, so we don't have to worry about retaining that whatsoever. Okay, now to get started here, the first thing that we need to do is get this guy on out. Now, let's go ahead and start by removing the shift knob. So once the shift knob is off, next thing here is we need to pull off these little cover panels on both sides. Just held on with clips, they should come on free. After that, let's take the trim piece up and around our shift knob. Oop, there it goes. We have a little panel tool that helps us kind of pop those clips on out. Just like that. Hold on with three clips in the front, a couple clips in the back. Set that off to the side. Next here, let's go ahead and remove our two Phillips screws. Just like so. Our center console is just held on with clips. Just like that. All right, so with that totally out of the way, next we can unsnap our little pocket here. It should just come right on out. Oh, we can get it out there. Unplug everything back behind. Just like that. In panel tool, we need to pop our AC vents out. Like that, there we go. Alrighty, and finally, we're to the radio and heating and air controls. Now we'll need to transfer these and everything over to our new kit, but for now, we need to pull this whole thing. There's gonna be two 10 millimeters in the top and two in the bottom. Let's go ahead and pull those on out. All right, with those removed, let's unsnap the radio. Now you're gonna have a few harnesses to disconnect on the back of the radio and heating and air controls. Start disconnecting those harnesses. Now, most of these harnesses have little locks on them. You push in the locks and it relieves the clip itself and the harness should pull on out of the radio. Okay, with everything disconnected here, let's now head over to the bench and show you the parts that we're gonna need for our install. Okay, so we're here at the bench. Now the parts that we're gonna need for the install, first and foremost, is the radio that we've chosen to go with. Customer has brought us this dual audio DCPA701. Uh, features Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now to accommodate this in the factory location, we need a dash kit. Now this one calls for the Metra 95-8218. S for silver, you can get them also in black. Now to accommodate the wiring here, we have a wiring harness adapter. Now again, there's two versions of this, one that retains JBL, one that does not. This is the SWRTY61J for JBL by Crux. Um, this also retains our factory aux and steering wheel controls. The If you didn't have JBL, the version that you're looking for is the SWRTY61S. And we're gonna link all these down in the description for you as well. And finally, we have an aux USB flush mount adapter. Because our USBs on the radio are on the back, we're gonna do this to make a nice clean factory look to mount those USBs in the unused factory power socket within the little cubby in the center console. So at this point of time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the radio out get it assembled in the dash kit and accommodated within the bracket itself, 
And then secondly, we're gonna grab the harness out of the box and the harness with our crux and start getting everything soldered up color for now color. We've identified that we need this version of the harness. Now our crux interface kit comes with two versions and this one fits our vehicle. Um, both plugs do plug on in, so we don't need the other one. We also have our steering wheel control cable that we identify that we'll need also with our aftermarket radio. And we have the radio's harness adapter itself. What we're gonna do they start matching up color for color. Essentially, it is color for color. Um, however, there may be some variants. So once we get those connected, we'll make note of any special connections to be aware of as you solder up your harness. Now, if you don't know how to solder, don't have the means to do so, you can also use butt connectors or crimp caps. Um, just don't twist and tape or use wire nuts as they're not designed for an automotive application. Okay, so we finished soldering up our connections here. Really color for color. The only special ones that we made off our blue white wire, which is a remote turn on, we were adding an aftermarket amplifier. So we left our remote turn off just off there as well. Just soldered it in, in parallel. Um, another special connection, if you have JBL, you won't be using the rear speakers because the factory JBL amplifier only uses two channels of input to amplify all your speakers. Uh, the fader option is actually controlled in the amp itself, and so we won't be using the rear speakers of our aftermarket radio. And everything else is really color for color. So at this point of time, what we're going to do is we put heat shrink on those connections. We're going to move it up and over those connections and shrink it down with the heat gun. With those tubes all shrunken down, we're going to wrap our harness and test the tape. Alrighty, so we finished wrapping up our harness. This end plugs in the vehicle. This end plugs into the radio. Uh, we left our backup camera trigger wire, which is purple white. We are doing a backup camera in this, which we will show you in a separate video. Um, this is our steering wheel control cable, dual specific radio. Then we have our amplifier turn on our X1 that we just left off for an aftermarket amplifier. This end goes to an aux input. If your radio has an aux, this end plugs into our smart harness side which will control our steering wheel volume controls. Now, looking at this module here, if we flip it on around, it has some dip switches. Now, looking at these dip switches, the, the bank on your left, when the, the wording is right side up, the bank on the left is for steering wheel controls, and we've set ours to off on on, because that, according to our instructions, is the configuration we needed for our dual radio. Now, the right side is your gain level adjustment for your factory JBL sound system. And to know which configuration you need, looking in your instructions, you're gonna have a certain set of those gain offs and on, depending on your application. So if you want no uh, gain adjustment, then you set everything to off. And then going down from there, you can see the DB increase in voltage goes from 1.7 also all the way down to 12.9 uh, db and volts so keep that in mind i'd start from the top turn it on see how it sounds if you need more decibel and more voltage then turn off the radio unplug it and start working your way down the list we're going to plug this guy on in this end will plug into our steering wheel controls okay now at this time, we're done here, and now focus our attention on our radio and dash kit. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, we need to take this clip off the upper portion here. And next, let's go ahead and remove the screws. Okay, so it should just unslide and then come on and off. There we go. So that's how it clips in. It goes in and slides and locks into place. There's our factory radio now out of the way. Grab our aftermarket kit and start mounting up the new one.
Okay, so we finished our assembly here. Now we did have a small gap up underneath the radio, but we filled it with some foam, um, some one-sided foam so it sticks to the bottom and it just fills in that gap nice and evenly. Um, at this point, the radio is done and assembled. Everything is good to go. We put on our clips. Everything's been screwed in nice and tight. And uh, at this point, we can set this off to the side. The last thing we're going to do, and this is totally optional, but we went ahead and popped the power socket out of the center co console cubby. And we put our dual USB there. And essentially, it just fits in its place and a nut holds it on. Then one end actually will go to the radio for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And the other one, we're going to put through a 5 volt adapter, just your USB adapter, plug this back in, and use the other USB as a dedicated charge. We're done here at the bench with the wiring harness and radio all assembled and ready to go. Let's head back to the car and get everything installed. All right, so at this point in time, we are ready now to get our radio reinstalled back in the dash. So let's start making our connections here. Grab our wiring harness and start plugging everything in here. Just like that. Okay, at this time, we're ready to get this all reinstalled. So let's go ahead and do so. <sighs> so we got it snapped into place here, hooked up our HVAC controls. Perfect. All right, and uh, all our speakers are working great. Now at this point of time, since we verified everything's working, we've got the radio, we got USB working, let's go ahead and continue reassembling the dash. Okay, so we got everything all back in and reassembled. It's looking great. We got our USB port down there, all functioning. Bottom one's for charge, top one's for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Our backup camera, nice clean and clear picture, out of reverse. Perfect. All right, that's about it for this install. Everything went back really nice and clean. Super uh, impressed on how everything works and it sounds awesome. Uh, if you like what you saw, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, we did front door speakers on this vehicle. We did rear deck speakers. We did an amp amplifier. We did a subwoofer. And we also bypassed the factory JBL amplifier. And we also added a backup camera. So we'll have all those videos linked in the description if you want to see more on this uh, specific model. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post great content all the time. We'll see you in the next video.